So at this point, now we have the entire building geometry kind of set. And what's cool is that we can change all of these. So a number of floors, we can change less. And the elevator will update with it. The first floor can be whatever size. And we can change that too. And floor to ceiling height, this is going to be how much the remaining floors have. So the first thing we'll do is create our base geometry, which is going to be a rectangle. That way we can extract a point. So we'll go here to a plane surface and we'll give it a value. So we'll just go here to 50 by 50. And this is going to be a base geometry for a building. So the building would be, let's say 50 by 50. And now we're going to extract a point and that is where the elevator is going to be or the vertical circulation. So we'll take this plane and there are different ways we can extract points on this surface. We can use evaluate surface, which lets us evaluate this plane. And then we can pick a point using an MD slider. Now what happens with an MD slider is you have the ability to pick a point from zero to one and from zero to one, and it will turn this surface into zero to one as long as we re-parameterize. Otherwise, it's going to go 0.5 and 0.5, or here, it's going to go 1 and 1. So it reparameterizes this surface by right-clicking here, reparameterize. Now we can actually bring this back to 0.5, which, as you can see, sometimes it's really difficult to get precise. So the other way is to construct a point. And this point is going to be at 0.5 in the X and 0.5 in the Y. Now, if we use that as a point, then we can, you see that it's more precise. It's actually going to put it precisely in the middle, but this is another way that we can do it visually to move the point around. We can also create two different sliders. This way we can, let's say, place this here in the x0 and then move this up and down. The reason why you see this point is because we have this preview, so we'll disable the preview. And now with this point, we can start creating our geometry. So let's go here to one, or 0.5, which is halfway, and then to one, all the way to the back. With this point, we'll start by creating a rectangle based off of this point. And now we'll use the X and Y size. I'll go to 10.5 and then 10.5. Now notice that it is created here at this point and it goes X 10.5, Y 10.5. There are different ways in which we can center this. We can also create a domain from negative 10.5 to 10.5 but the technique I like to use is just moving it using a vector so we'll move this rectangle using a vector XYZ and now we can take this do it in the opposite direction so we're going to go X and Y we're going to go divide by 2 because we only want it halfway so this vector divided by two, and then we're going to go negative because we don't want it to move up. We want it to move back. So what this does is it gives us a clean X and Y, but it moves it and shifts it to the center. This way we don't have to focus on trying to center it or having it not be symmetrical. So we'll go 10 here, 10 here. And we can also take this and shift it. So if let's say this was the floor plate and this was the location of the elevator, the elevator can either be outside or I guess the terms would be like flush to the outside, semi-flush here or all the way in, recessed. So 
what we can do is take this and move it or we can shift it by unplugging let's say the Y and then it'll make it flush but then that's not necessarily what we want we can take the overall and shift it by this amount so we can go move in which direction in the Y direction and it's 10.5 divided by 2 And then we can also go negative if we want it to be brought in all the way. So we have two options. We're going to just be creating it off of this. So here's the thing. We can go, let's say, 10.0. Let's try this. So this is one way to do it, 10.0. So we can shift it in or we can shift it back so we can do minus 10 depending on where we want that location now let's go ahead and disable the preview on this now create the overall form for the elevator so we'll take this rectangle and that is what we'll be using to create it also notice that the entire design is based off of this point so we can always change this point location let's say we can just add a random point and that could be the location of where this is located so one way to do this is to move this out of the way bring in a point component and then be able to set this point to a different different one so I can select this and plug this and set one point and now it's located here now it's shifted so we'll bring it back to zero and this is our point location up oh, movement minus 10 we're gonna go zero here so we could either use a point that we create or this fully parametric point so we'll be using the parametric point let's move this back we'll take this and we'll offset it so offset curve we're going to offset to the inside so I'll bring in a negative component and then I'll go to 0 0.50. So it's going to be six inches since our design or this file is in feet. So 0.5 is going to be half a foot or six inches. Now we can take these two and create a boundary surface. A boundary surface is nothing more than creating a surface. When we plug both of these in, they will be overlapping because those are two different inputs. Now, if we flatten the input, you'll see that it'll look at both of those as the same ones and it'll create a surface between the two. Uh, you can also loft them together, but with this one, it creates a nice surface here that now I can extrude to create the floor height. So I'll go here and go to extrude, direction, up in the Z direction, and the factor is going to be the amount. So 12.5, and this would be the floor to Z ceiling height. So this is going to be floor to ceiling height. This is going to be the elevator wall depth.
this is going to be how we shift it either in or back depending on this number right so we can take this number and just plug it in here or we could just say zero to keep it centered and then we can change the size of the elevator right because sometimes you'll have an elevator shaft that has more than one or just a larger elevator and this is going to be our the size of our building so it will center it no matter what so let's go back to this portion now we're going to be creating a door so the door is going to be located on this end um, there are a few things that we can do we can go back to our rectangle here we can explode it so all of the stuff and all of the geometry that we create from the beginning we can use and go back to previous steps like this one where I had created this rectangle here now we can take this rectangle and since it's all one polyline we need to explode it into the four different segments now with that I can just pick one but what happens is this component has all of the four different curves inside of it so I'll go to list item where I can pick one of those and it just happens to be that this one is index of zero which means that it goes zero one two three or zero one two three the way to know which one is which you can go to a so this is a technique to understand how things are organized we can go to midpoint because these segments we need to extract the center of it so we know which one corresponds to which line and now we can do a point list which lets us understand visually how they're organized so zero one two and three so now you know that here in the index we go zero or if we went see here we need to change the size so if this is three and i went to index set integer of three well i would be able to pick number three so let's go to zero now that we have this so this was just more of a demonstration as to how we can see how the information is organized now we can delete this and we can take a look at this curve now we can do two things we can either extract a midpoint and create a box or we can take a point move it to each side extrude it up and then extrude it both ways so understand that i'm going to take a specific direction to create the step but there are many other ways in which you can create it and in some instances there are better ways to create it than possibly the one that i'm showing you but i'm showing you this technique because it al almost always works um, for this scenario so what i'll do is i'll take this we'll go to a midpoint so curve middle now we need to understand how wide we want the door to be so if we see x and y we can take this and move it this point in the positive x then move it in the negative x but understand that whatever amount we do in the x and the negative x it's going to be twice as much as the amount so if i take this and i move it this point this geometry in which direction in the x direction and i said i want it to be a 4.5 foot door or less now we'll take this copy it again so slide it down and tap alt now we can bring in a negative component for this one this way it moves it in the other direction now we can create a line segment between the start and end point so what happens is three so let's put it at three what happens is this is three and this is three making this an overall of six so what i need to do is do three divided by two and then three is going to be 
one and a half here. So divided by two, one and a half, one and a half, making it the overall size of three. We'll go five here. Now with this line segment, we can extrude it. In the Z direction, so we're going to be extruding it up. Now we're going to give it a value. So this is going to be the door height. So we'll go to 8.5. And so this surface now becomes the door location. What we need to do is subtract it from the overall form. So we'll take that extrusion, then we'll go to extrude again. This time, in which direction? We'll be using amplitude. Amplitude extrudes perpendicular to the face. So when I use this extrusion as the vector, it's going to reference the normal of this surface. So now we'll go to this extrusion, put it here in the base, and then this vector in the direction. Notice that it's extruding out, so we definitely want to bring in a negative component to extrude it in the other direction. And the amplitude is going to be the same as the wall thickness. So technically, we right now we don't really necessarily have to bring in another value because this is 0.5 and this is 1, so it's always going to intersect in this scenario, but there are going to be cases in which the wall is going to be more than 1, and therefore this won't intersect completely. So what I like to do is go to wall, elevator wall, and this is going to go in the negative direction. We'll use this as the amplitude. And then I'll just delete this. Actually, let's bring this back. We'll extrude. What I'm doing is extruding in the opposite, in the minus 0.5, which brings it in. Now when I change this, it'll change the wall, the door depth. With that being said, let's take this, this original surface that we created for the door and all of this information, and we can hide it or disable preview. And then we'll go to the wall and bring in a solid difference. Solid difference is the same thing as Boolean difference. A is going to be what you want to keep and B is what you subtract. So I want to keep the walls and I want to subtract the door. So now I can hide the walls from before, and we see that now we have the door and the walls, and we can change all of these parameters and they will update according to the script. So all we're doing is taking all the steps that we would typically do inside of Rhino, and we're just programming them here with every step, and we can go back and add more depending on what we want. So everything is kind of laid out here. Next thing we need to do is create the series of floors. So we're going to create this array vertical. And the idea is not to create the architectural building, but mostly to show you how to add an elevator or vertical circulation using this overall base geometry and this scripted design that we can array vertically um, in the next steps. So let me show you how we're going to do that. For the floor place, we're going to take the original surface and create a vertical array. So we'll go here to move, plug in the plane as the geometry, then the motion is going to be in the Z direction because we want to copy them vertical. And the next component is going to be series. Now you can also use another component called range, but I like to use series because it lets me create multiple numbers creating the interval in between and the amount of copies I want. So I'll go, I want three floors. So that's the count. I want each floor to step by. How much? Well, it's going to be the same as our 
vertical height. So depending on what we use to extrude vertically, we have floor to ceiling height. This is going to be the amount. So 12.5 will go to 12.5 is going to be here. So what happens is I have to bring this all the way over because this number is all the way over here. So I'll bring in series in here and then 12.5 is going to be for the step. And since it's the same step, well, that is how we have them matching here. So we'll move this up and you'll see that now we have multiple floors. Now what we're going to do is take these and before we array them, we're going to extrude this down. So we'll go to extrude this plane down, so negative direction using the negative component and Z because it's going to go down in the Z direction. So now this is going to be the floor depth. So we'll just do 2.5, I'll actually do 1.5. Disable the preview on the plane. And now rather than arraying the surface, we're going to array the floor. The one thing that I haven't talked about is the start number. If we go to the start number being something different, so if we said the start number is going to be twenty, right? Which means that the first floor is going to be larger than the ones above. Then if that's the case, we do need to do something a little bit different, which is extrude just the form and not these, and then subtract them later. And it may not make sense right now, but I can show you. Here's, here's the thing that I am battling with at the moment is I can make this, this exercise more complicated and show you how that is done where I can show you a simpler exercise so you can understand how to do it in a more straight or in a more practical uh, exercise, or I can show you both ways. So what makes me think about this is we have a series of numbers, so 8, 20, 32, and all of these numbers, which add up to the overall height. Now, I need to... If I wanted to, we can extrude this by creating a multiplication of 8 times 12 and then extrusion in the Z direction plus the additional amount that we have here. So how do we do this? This this gets a little bit tricky, but I, I actually love playing with the data and being able to decipher some of these. To me, it's almost like a puzzle. So that's why I kind of, I want to show you straightforward tricks and tips, but at the same time, I want to show you how to use the data and how to make sure that you get things right. So here's what's happening. When we multiply, 12, which is the ceiling height, the typical ceiling height by 8, and then we don't have the difference. What's the difference? Well, if we do a subtraction between 20 and 12, so if I subtract 20, 12.5 from 20, then that gives me 7.5, and that is the amount that I need to add to the overall height so it matches. Why? Because we're not accounting for the difference here on the 20 for the start. First floor height. And also at the end of this, if you if I got you confused with some of these things because 
parametric design sometimes is a little bit confusing in terms of finding different ways to create your design. If this doesn't make sense, just download the script. I'll have it for free the first week. And this way you can see how I created this. Now, this is going to be number of floors. So what happens is if I subtract 20, which is the first floor height from 12, which is the typical, then I get the difference between the two. And now I can use this number 7.5 and add it to the multiplication and then have that be the overall height. You see that? Now what happens, let's see here. We have one close B rep all the way here to the top. Now I'm trying to see. It's because this is doing the difference, so I don't need to do that yet. Um, so we have this door. Okay, this door is located right at the floor. Now we need to array this vertically. So what I can do is use the same series component, copy it, and array the door. So I'm bringing this all the way over. And notice that we have one more at the top. Now we can do a roof deck, which means that we would actually extrude this all the way up above. Um, yeah, let's do that. So the way to do that is instead of just extruding it, multiplying it by the floors, then we need to add so sometimes this is a way that you can kind of add more things to your design. If you want an additional floor at the top, well, we know that the floor to ceiling height is 12. So we'll add 12 to the entire thing, right? To the entire value and then use this as a Z, which means that we actually have roof deck access here. And if we wanted to, we can add more if this is, you know, sometimes the elevator wants to go a little bit more. We can do another addition and that, that slider be the additional at the top. So understand that you can add and subtract as much as you want, but at the end, what matters the most is going to be your inputs and outputs. And so we have all of our elevators lined up perfectly. Now we can take this, the doors, including the first one. So this one and this, these, I'm going to route them through a geometry component this way that they're all kind of in one and I can disable the preview on this and move on to creating the subtraction. So now we can go back to difference, solid difference use the overall wall for the outside and then the b reps b are going to be these so what we have here is the overall wall subtracted from the or the door subtracted from the overall walls The ability to be able to shift this back and forth is really, really interesting here. And lastly, I think this is going to be a critical portion is creating the roof and creating the foundation. There are different ways in which we can do this once again. But what I'd like to do is take the base rectangle, turn it into a surface and extrude it down and be able to move that all the way up to the top. So we'll go back to our original rectangle, which we moved and then shift it again in this. We can go here to zero if we want. This surface is going to be 
boundary surfaces. With this, we'll extrude it down. So we'll go to extrude. Down, so we'll go negative. Z, because we want it to go down in the Z direction. Then we'll go to 3.5 to kind of create that foundation. We're going to take this surface and move it all the way up to the top. So the good thing is once you've already set the stage for vertical arrays, we can take this surface and move it all the way up to the top. So it's going to be this extrusion is from here to the top. So if we use that same vector, We can move it all the way to the top here. And now, rather than extruding it down, I'll copy these and not the negative. So it'll be two at the bottom, three at the top. Next is going to be these two and this. So the entire tower, we need to create a box so we can subtract from the floors. So what I'll do here is go to move. Nope, it's going to be solid union. Solid union between the bottom basement or the foundation and there's typically equipment either at the top or at the bottom or on the sides so all of these parameters we can adjust to make sure it, en it encompasses or it accounts for those things so we'll take this top one two top one bottom one and and this wall the reason why i did this one back here rather than this one is because this one has less geometry and when I put them all together using union, it will actually be faster than this one that already has all the cutouts for the doors. So what I'll do is take this, disable preview, and type in union or bounding box. Um, you can either do bounding box or this box, which will create a box around your geometry. And now I'll select this. Let's see here. So this is saying that it's creating two different B reps and that's because there's a hollow portion on the inside. So I'll actually have to take back this one and plug in the other one. Why? Because it has openings and it actually will work correctly. So one close B rep, then it creates just one box. Otherwise the other one creates an entire it creates some issues. So as long as you have one box at the end then you're good. Why? Because we we need to use that box for subtracting the floors. Let's go back to our floors. And go to solve the difference between the floors that I want to keep and subtract this box. Now I can disable preview here and see that not only – 
So disable the preview on the box that subtracts it and bring back the walls. So at this point, now we have the entire building geometry kind of set. And what's cool is that we can change all of these. So number of floors, we can change less. And the elevator will update with it. The first floor can be whatever size, and we can change that too. And floor to ceiling height, this is going to be how much the remaining floors have. All of this is going to be super useful for those of you who want to create vertical circulation for buildings that have multiple floors, and also showing you how to create a multi floor building where the first initial step is going to be different than the rest and everything here is seamless and will work perfectly as long as you know what parameters you want to change so hopefully you found that useful um, i post videos like these every week where you can learn exercises and i share techniques that you can learn and use for all of your parametric designs so thank you very much for being here and i hope to see you on the next one